Before we start overclocking the CPU, we need to install some tools in Windows and see where the CPU is in regards to its cooling and performance. The first program we'll need is called Prime95. You can find Prime95 on several sites for free and download either the 32-bit or the 64-bit version, depending on if you're running a 32-bit or 64-bit OS. If you're not sure, get the 32-bit version. It will run in both 32-bit and 64-bit operating systems. Just extract the zip file into a folder using your favorite unzipping program. I'll just use the one that's built into Windows, and I'll put it on the C drive. To make it easy to get to, I'll right-click, drag, and drop it on the desktop to create a shortcut to it. And I'll delete the original zip file. And Windows asks if you're sure you want to run it because it is an executable, which can be dangerous. But this file's okay, so we'll uncheck Always Ask and run it. The first time you run Prime95, it'll ask you if you want to join GIMPs. GIMPs is a hunt for huge prime numbers, which is what Prime95 is mainly used for. We'll just run the stress test. And it defaults to run a torture test. To stress test the CPU, we'd run the small FFTs. To stress test the RAM and CPU, you'd use the blend option. For now, we'll close the torture test dialog. To get it back, click Options and Torture Test. If you minimize Prime95, it will go down into the system tray. We'll click Test and Exit for now. Another useful tool is a timer. You're going to need to run Prime95 to stress test the system for several minutes at a time. Prime95 doesn't have a built-in timer, so go to Google and do a search for O-R-Z-E-S-Z-E-K timer. Scroll down and click to download it. Extract the zip file to a folder. I'll make a shortcut and delete the original file, and I'll click to run it. Uncheck the Always Ask. If you get an error, it means you're running Windows XP and you don't have the .NET Framework 3.1 installed. The timer program needs this to run, so go back to Google and do a search for .NET Framework 3.5. Go to the Microsoft link, click Download, click Run, install the program, and run the timer again. It's a very simple program. You type in the number of minutes for the countdown, press Enter, and it begins the countdown. And it will count down to zero and play an alarm sound. If you right-click anywhere in the white box, you can change the volume or turn off the alarm. I'll close the timer for now. Another stress tester we'll be using is called Burn In Test. You can download it from www.passmark.com. We'll click Download. There is a standard and professional edition with 32 bit and 64 bit versions of each. The Pro version has the most options for testing. There's a 30-day trial before you buy, which is plenty of time to test one system. After it downloads, just run the EXE and install it. We've already installed it on this system, so I'll launch it. And I'll let the program have access to system information. To stress test the CPU, we'd click this little down arrow and choose CPU coverage. To test the RAM, we'd choose RAM. If you've installed the standard version, you can get to the same test 
by clicking Quick Test and then either CPU Coverage or RAM. Both the CPU Coverage and RAM tests will run through a series of cycles and then either say Pass or Fail. We'll stop it and close Burn in Test for now. Another useful tool is called CPU ID. You can download it from www.cpuid.com. You usually have to scroll down to find it. Download the latest EXE. Run the file. And install it. Letting it put an icon on the desktop. I'll uncheck View the README, and we'll start CPU ID. CPU ID lets us see information on the CPU, memory, and motherboard from within Windows. The CPU speed, which right now is fluctuating and is actually fairly low, we'll explain why in a moment. The multiplier, which is also very low. The reference clock speed. HTLink, and the voltage going to the CPU. All useful information. We'll close CPU-Z, and we're also going to need a way to monitor the CPU temperature. A program called CoreTemp will do the trick. You can get it from www.alcpu.com and get either the 32-bit or 64-bit version. Again, if you're not sure, get the 32-bit, as it will run in both 32-bit and 64-bit operating systems. I'll go ahead and get the 64-bit, save it to the desktop, and extract the zip file to a folder on the hard drive. I'll make the shortcut. Delete the original zip file and run core temp. It tells us the temperature the CPU is running at, and it keeps track of the low and high temperatures. Like CPU ID, it also shows the voltage going to the CPU cores, as well as the speeds each core is running at, with the reference clock and multiplier being used. 